Hey you right, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video and today we're going to be talking about how the Royal Marines have got it right and I feel like the army could look at them and do better. But before we do that, I just want to thank you all for your continued support. It's absolutely amazing. We've hit over like three and a half million views now, over 30,000 subs. So thank you very much. And a huge shout out to all the channel members. Uh, you got Alex, True, Rebecca, Ryan, Ollie, Ian, and Marco. So I just want to give a huge shout out to them. Thank you for joining the channel. It's been great chatting to you on the Discord. But let's get into this video. Are the Royal Marines doing it better than the Army? Okay, what do I mean that the Royal Marines are doing it better than the Army? They're advertising their videos. I'm going to play a video for today that they released about four days ago and it is, I feel it's just spot on and I feel their advertising is spot on. Uh, the Army do put out some really good stuff through Instagram and YouTube um, but I just feel like the Marines have just been doing it better recently. I've been listening to the group podcast and I think, I can't remember which podcast it was but they were talking about it. They're all ex-serving lads, one of them still serving, and they were talking about it before, just how the Royal Marines have got it. And I know I spoke to people within the British Army who have helped them come up with these ideas um, and these marketing campaigns, and apparently it does work, but I feel like for people like myself, we just think it's a little bit Webster's, and it could be better. You wanna see what the Royal Marines are doing. But enough chatting, let's get into it. We know that we train in the, the harshest of environments and we don't stop when the weather gets bad. In order to survive, just to survive, your drills have to be world class. I think the most important thing is survivability. You know, being able to outlast our enemy. Every moment you're in the Arctic, it is trying to hurt you or kill you. So straight away, they, they captured, your, captured your attention. Bob, you're gonna go somewhere that's pretty arduous, pretty, that's pretty tough to live in. And you have to be a world-class soldier. You have to be the best of the best already. It's pretty much what they're saying. You need to be on top of your drills. You need to be world-class already. They're capturing your attention saying, we are the elite. That's spot on. Everyone wants to be the best of the best, don't they? So training in Norway not only prepares you for battle and operations in the high north, it prepares you for operations all over the world. My early experience was I passed out of recruit training, a few months later went to Norway, then a really hard, arduous Norway, and in the next again winter I was in Afghanistan. So the skills to keep warm to still operate when the conditions are bad. We're all learnt from, from Norway. Uh, and that's been a real solid foundation to my career in the Royal Marines. If you take the, the worst case scenario, say a peer adversary has taken ground in the High North and three commander brigade as UK defences experts in mountain cold weather warfare, we'd be sent in first sort of paved the way for the, the remainder of the force. We'd look to hit softer targets, so logistical nodes, small teams that are out and about enabling greater actions, forward air controllers, drone operators, and, and targets that can be hit that have maximum effect. Now, without shelter, without food, without water, the enemy is severely restricted in this environment. So if we can take out that support to the frontline enemy troops, 
we're going to be doing a good job. We've got a long history with Norway um, in terms of the formation of commandos and some of the very first operations in World War II were conducted. Right, here we go as well, right, they've captured your attention and they're telling you need to be a world-class soldier straight away. Then they go into a good little intro. The Royal Marines out there doing their job, wearing the alley kit, um, just cutting about like they know um, what they're doing and they mean business. Just also what I'm going on about now is what I want to get the point across is just like the creative content, um, the skills of the photographers and the videographers uh, and the way they've collated this inform information and footage and then put it into this video so already we're what three minutes in um, and I just feel like it just makes you want to go to the Nor um, Norway to the Arctic. Do you really want to go to the Arctic to Norway minus 25 all the time? It's really hard to survive, most probably not but they're making it look their way, they're making it look cool so this is how I'm going to explain it like in simple terms for a civilian like yourself, majority of you are most probably civilians who watch my videos it looks cool, like, it's what you want to do, it's what you want to join the army for. He spoke about being in Afghan, so they played some footage of them in Afghan in concept because that's what we all join the army for. You want to go abroad and you want to go on these operations and you want to do stuff like that. I'm not saying it happens for everyone, but that's what we join the, the military for. You know, they're cutting around the Arctic, they're doing their skills and drills, that's constantly what you see, you're not seeing them just doing a little bit of admin here and there, they're out on patrol, they're out in contacts, he's talking about capturing soft targets and stuff going in first, um, and just the creative content's just amazing, but we're gonna continue, yeah, we're gonna continue watching this. Up and along the Norwegian coastline. We've been meaningfully training in the Arctic, in Norway, for over half a century, and it's that sort of collective experience which we see distilled down into our mountain leaders. And it's one of the reasons why we can take people relatively unfamiliar uh, with the Arctic and very quickly train them up to a good standard. So mountain leaders are the UK defence specialists in Arctic and mountain warfare. To operate in the mountains it takes a, a combination of really extremely difficult skills, so amphibiosity, you've got cliff assault and reconnaissance. Now doing that in the mountains is extremely difficult, doing it in the Arctic is just as hard if not harder. Our secondary role to the, the operational side of things is to train the rest of 3 Commander Brigade in those skills, so Arctic and mountainous warfare. Now that you're in that situation, it's going to get yourself out of it. So by being proactive, being not so what I found clever is the way they've got, they've got a skilled and experienced mountain leader here. He knows his job inside out, he knows what he's doing, he's got experience, he's gone on the course, he's come away and then he's gone and taught the Royal Marines and then the other commando within the Arctic and the mountains. Um, so he knows exactly what he's going on about, but why they're doing it, it's like the B-roll that's playing um, while he's talking. Once again, he's talking about it and then they've got people doing it and it's and it's the way they've created it, it's just amazing. Um, and I definitely feel like the army could do more videos or footage like this. This is the environment, it's the way you should be thinking. There's much distance between you and that enemy. few lads uh, back on camp talking about how arduous Norway is. I've enjoyed the whole course I'll be honest, some lads will think a lot differently. Some lads have never skied in their lives, it's the first time they've put skis on. Mm. That in itself is a challenge and then as soon as you add a weapon system your battle kit and also a Bergen to that, it starts getting really, really difficult. So 
there's many dangers that come with working in a cold weather environment, particularly in Norway. The rate of cold weather injuries, if you're untrained, would be extremely high. You just need to look back at previous wars and large... So just a quick one there of what he's going on about battle kit. Um, and then your Bergen and your skis and all that sort of stuff. I've got to agree, that's got to be hard. I've never done that. Um, but just trying to patrol with full kit, you know, 30, 40 kilos weapon body armor through Otterburn Brecon is hard enough. Then you do it through Otterburn or Brecon or say Gaylock Head up in Scotland in the winter, hard enough. In the winter when it's snowing, it's hard, it's very hard. You got to do that in the Arctic. Uh, on the skis. So yeah, you've got to give it off to the Royal Marines here, definitely. Um, yeah, it's got to be hard. You can see why some of them didn't enjoy the course. Tonks of horses were brought to the knees through just cold weather injuries alone, through maybe a, a lack of food, which would then cause a lack of energy in the body and then hypothermia. Uh, hypothermia goes hand in hand with frostbite operating out here, it's not only the, the snow and the cold, it's the mountainous environment. All this is conducive to, to bring in a, a force that is normally operable all over the world to absolutely inoperable if, if they're untrained. There's a few different types of shelter we can use. The first one, if you're in the tree line, is a brushwood shelter. They're quite time consuming to build, so like a, a lean-to using branches and wood, uh, stuff to insulate from the ground, block the wind, the other one is a, a Quincy, so if you've not got that much snow, you could pile up snow in a big mound, flatten it all down and dig into it, and it's essentially a snow shelter. I tend to use and, and teach as much as possible either a snow cave, so digging into a sort of heavy snow bank, it's minimal, minimal hours to construct, minimal effort, but you're out of the elements, totally out of the elements. The temperature outside could be minus, minus 20, but inside with a, with a candle on, maybe a four-man team to, to heat the inside space with a candle, you're looking at about zero degrees. For Royal Marine Commandos, Norway is in our blood in that respect. It's always been one of those almost rites of passage, rightly or wrongly. Um, you know, there are some instances where you probably don't feel like a real bootneck until you've done a Norway. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. This is what everyone uh, within the military and the British Army knows the Royal Marines for, the commandos who are attached to uh, the brigades. See icebreaker drills jumping in that ice, so let's see this. So the icebreaker drills, I mean, th that's a thing that everyone really affiliates to, to Norway in general, jumping in that, that ice cold water, uh, getting the shock of your life. So if somebody's went through the ice, they, they have a number of effects that, that happen. So cold shock is when the body first experiences unexpected uh, extreme cold water all over the body. If they're in there for a long time, then that's when it becomes really dangerous. The chances of hypothermia after a few minutes of in there are increased greatly. If there's a high wind, that is also a massive concern for us because by convection, the body is cooled rapidly. survive that is a good start if you can't maneuver out here it seriously hinders the, the output that you can have so we like to concentrate a large chunk of our training towards mobility it's won wars in the past you know with the Finnish looking at their winter war back in the 40s and you know going back thousands of years it's always been mobility that's the issue I've been skiing a few times, it does differ quite considerably. So I was quite confident coming out here. I was quickly, I quickly realised how much more difficult it is during, you know, over this cross-country terrain. The, the nature of the Norwegian coastline is quite unique. There's a lot of places that we can secretly access this 
high north uh, from the from the coastline, a lot of hidden places. But we do need specialists to to recce those areas prior to going in. So the shore reconnaissance teams of SRS they do the the beach recce prior to anyone else. So SRS are the their surveillance and reconnaissance squadron. So they're the forefront of three commander brigade, essentially the, the eyes and ears of the brigade. Again, filled predominantly with mountain leaders. They're the sort of pointiest end of the stick when it comes to three commander brigade. Yeah, you've got to say that uh, they definitely look alley, don't they? They look like right. they know what they're doing. If you bumped into them, you wouldn't want to mess with them. Fair play, that's a love for concerts, um, and just that looks pretty awesome to be honest. For the United Kingdom, Norway is our closest Arctic partner, and whilst that interest has perhaps waxed and waned, whilst other events have been occurring, there's little doubt now with the northern sea route beginning to open up and what we're seeing is increased competition perhaps starting to emerge around the arctic really our role is to help ensure that those threats do not materialize by being able to show the role the united kingdom would play if those threats were to start to become manifest so we definitely go heavy on the on the fight phase because that's where the real difficulties are encountered and that's where the, the development and experiences is gained the most. We had already done two weeks uh, skiing and getting ourselves prepped for the final phase. It was just a little bit more difficult than putting all your tactical responsibilities, incorporating that into the, the basic stuff that you learned prior. So the idea in a future conflict of small, agile commando teams at reach causing absolute mayhem will force them to deal with the problem one way or another. These smaller teams will be able to blend into that background, cause the damage and evaporate again. And that for me, as a commando, is a genuinely exciting prospect. And there it is, that's the video I was going on about, or the short film that you can call it, because uh, that's basically what it is, a very short film, and just giving you an insight into the Royal Marine Commandos and what they do within Norway and how they train for the Arctic conditions. Uh, like I said, that really, when I, I first saw I've watched a few minutes of it, because uh, I didn't want to watch the rest until I did this. It really uh, turned me on, I'm not going to lie, and I was like, Jesus, um, with everything that's been happening in the Royal Marines recently, recently uh, with getting all their new kit last year, you know, converting to C8s and stuff like that, getting all the cry um, and other forms of equipment. And then you hear them moving into these small little teams and specialising. And, and they, they do a lot on social media. They're always popping up on their, 
my social media and it's it's normally just some alley picture and that's not to be an, an end all of the army you know um, there is other stuff out there but the main point was just like the videography and the photography and the way they created it and created this short film that I feel like you just engaged the whole way through and just the whole way through you feel like yeah I want to do that I want to do that I want to do that and I've got experience in the army I've never been to the Arctic but I worked in cold conditions with kit etc I know how crap it can be um, I know how crap it'd be to jump in that uh, ice cold water but they make me want to do it they make me want to go Norway um, and just freeze my tits off in minus 25 degrees uh, just really good um, so just literally hats off to the Royal Marines and the Royal Naval photographers that did that uh, army let's do better um, not that we don't do good footage because they do put some really good content out there um, but there's a, I think there's a few people that would agree with me uh, that that's one even with their adverts uh, they're a bit Webster's at times and a bit Chad and you look at them and you might be like oh, that's a bit cringy um, but they are called a capture attention um, and for like a young a young lad or girl um, especially when I was younger like the army adverts were different so they captured my attention I was like I really want to do that for sort of Royal Marine ones now I'd definitely pick uh, the Royal Marines over the British Army just through their adverts not saying job role though because there are some amazing jobs within the British Army especially now with Household Cavalry and the REC getting Ajax um, Parachute Regiment with what they're doing they're constantly busy um, and other stuff that's going on so and this new Ranger Regiment but yeah that's it I hope you enjoyed the video um, you can check the obviously the original video on the Royal Marines YouTube channel um, thank you to the Royal Marines and the Royal Navy for that and I'll catch you soon